This session is how to implement, optimize, or scale a DAM solution without getting overwhelmed. Um, that's what we're here to talk about today. So this webinar is for those of you who are working on a big project, a major initiative around digital asset management. Um, and you know maybe it's an implementation project. Maybe you're trying to optimize an existing system or scale an existing solution. Um, and you're, you've got a big effort in front of you. That's kind of where we, what we're talking about today, how to set those big projects up for success. So I will be sharing with you some, uh, some frameworks, some tools, some tips and tricks that you can use as you're getting started on your major project. So that's what we're going to do. And let's make sure we can move this thing forward. So by the end of this webinar, I want you to be able to create a strategy for your DAM initiative uh, that, that really works. That's my goal for today, uh, for this webinar. So um, I'm going to break down the whole concept of a strategy for, for DAM or digital asset management um, and try to give you, like I said, the tools and tricks and tips for, for how to execute that. So let me tell you a little bit about me. Like I said, my name is Kara, Kara Van Molson, and I'm the Managing Director at AVP. Um, and a little about me, um, I first started in DAM in around 2006, and I, at the time I was working at the United States Tennis Association. Um, one, of the, one day the marketing department comes along and says, we want a better way to access our library of assets. Can you help us select and implement a new DAM system? And of course I said, sure, but I actually really didn't know what I was doing at the time. I was very new, just out of graduate school. Um, and uh, I remember not being sure where to start, like no real, real, real clue of how to go about it. Um, I didn't know how to implement a dam. Uh, I remember being asked if we needed a taxonomy and I was like, mm, no, I don't think so. Um, so those of you who know me or know, know anything about dam know that was not the correct answer. Um, so needless to say, I, I, you know, it was a little shaky. Um, I didn't end up staying in that job long enough to see the implementation through, but I think back now and realize how I could have done a much better job for them. Um, and so fast forward um, to a few years later, and I started working as a consultant at AVP, still here 13 years later. Um, and we were seeing all sorts of issues with big damn initiatives that were going wrong. Um, big projects that would go nowhere because sometimes it was just too hard to know how to tackle everything. And the fear of failure would take old over and we would just see this paralysis um, within organizations. And then in other cases, we would see new dam system implementation efforts that were struggling to get to launch or deliver really any ROI, sometimes multiple years into the project. Lots of money and time spent, little ROI. And they, they were kind of coming to us to see if we could help get it back on track. Um, and I guess that's not too surprising. Uh, there's there's a lot of studies that show that around 70% of enterprise technology initiatives fail to deliver any discernible benefit to the business. It's astoundingly high. And it's one of those stats that I've heard for years and years. And I thought like maybe that was something from 20 years ago, but there are recent studies that show that this is still true. Um, so it's not too surprising that that a lot of um, organizations struggle with their big technology initiatives, and I would put DAM in that category. And so I realized that like nearly in every case where we were seeing this situation come up, the client was getting overwhelmed by trying to do too much at once with limited resources. And none of us have all the resources in the world, right? So there was just a lot of paddling in all directions and act, not actually moving anywhere going on in many, many cases. And so um, that that was the trouble. There was just sort of this more is more attitude, but more doesn't actually always move forward. So I started to see patterns. Um, the unsuccessful projects we were encountering had many, if not all of these features. They lacked alignment with business objectives and organizational strategy. They lacked defined scope and priorities. They were not engaging users in requirements gathering. And so the solutions were often out of alignment with what users actually needed, users of those technologies. Um, there would be unclear requirements, lots of scope creep, um, very unrealistic planning. And then when it came down to 
uh, execution or, or to, to the final go live, poor change management, so poor adoption. So not, not every project would have all of these, but many of them would have most of these. And so I'm wondering if you've ever seen this type of project before where, and it could be anything, not just related to DAM, but any kind of uh, organizational initiative um, where you've, you've seen it kind of struggle and, and whether these were the, the um, patterns that you observed at the time. Um, but on the other hand, so while we were seeing some of these that were struggling, we were also seeing some that were very successful. And I began to see the difference where, you know, between when things did not go well and when things did. And not surprising, it's, it's just the opposite. You know, it's exactly the opposite where the successful projects were aligned with business strategy. They had a very clear scope and priorities. They engaged users throughout the process, making sure they understood their needs and helped them understand what was going to be expected of them when the when the thing would go live. Their requirements were clear, great planning, great strong project management and change management. And so, you know, that this is uh, this is true for any kind of project. Again, not just a damn type of project, but like any kind of organizational project, a successful one will have these hallmarks. Um, but the struggle was to figure out how can we make this more specific to digital asset management? So I started reading about data strategy in general, since digital assets are a particular type of data, I sort of started to wonder, you know, how do people think about data, data strategy, how to create strong data initiatives, et cetera. Um, and a couple of years ago, I came across this article by Boston Consulting Group, and we're going to drop that link Um if we can get our chat figured out. Um, and it just really brought together all these ideas that had been bouncing around my head. And I really liked it. They state in this in this article, and it's a very short, easy to read article, um, but their approach is that continuously and iteratively identifying and prioritizing data use cases, and then mapping and organizing data assets and selectively updating the architecture is, is a very strong way for to mature a company's data capabilities. And they emphasize that a company must identify the specific data assets that it needs to fuel its use cases. And once this is identified, you can work on improving the quality of those specific assets. So this was sort of an aha moment for me because in DAM and related fields, we are pretty guilty of really trying to solve for everything. And I'll talk about more of what I mean by that in a minute. So I started working on translating this idea to DAM, which came together in a tool called the DAM Strategy Canvas that I'm gonna be introducing you to, to today. And this is something we make freely available on our website and we also use in the course of our engagements. And so bringing this together along with a couple other ideas that I'll talk about, um, we can now much more confidently build a solid foundation for a DAM initiative to set it up for success and not get overwhelmed by trying to do too much at once because we don't want it to suffer um, that, that perilous end. Um, and so we can sequence the work so that it will have the most impact. So I wanna to talk to you today about how you can learn to do the same thing. So what I'd like you to take away today is that to set your damn initiative up for success, start with a strategy. This is gonna be your foundation for your major digital asset management initiative. This strategy needs to be connected to business objectives to clearly solve a problem or enable an opportunity that it identifies the priority use cases you're trying to serve and it iteratively improves data quality and your overall capabilities. So today I'm gonna to share with you three secrets that I use in my consulting work to help you do this. So secret number one, is how to simplify the creation of a damn strategy. Now, I'm saying this word strategy, and this is a term we all use in our day-to-day -day life all the time. And it's, it's kind of a fuzzy word. We don't always have a strong shared meaning of what this is. Um, and sometimes I hear it very blatantly used incorrect, incorrectly. Um, if you kind of study up on this term, you know, there's lots of different uses, misuses. But anyway, we just need to get on the same page about what we're talking about here when we say strategy. So strategy as a concept comes from the military. That's where it originates, comes from, um, you know, thousands of years ago. 
uh, this idea of how will we win? What what is our approach that we're going to take to win the battle or the entire war, whatever it is? Um, later, this term was applied in corporate settings, and it was about how to compete or differentiate or dominate a market. Today, we use this word kind of in all sorts of places within our organizations. We have a data strategy, we have a technology strategy, we have a content strategy, et cetera. So there's lots of different um, kind of uh, ways of, of applying this term now. But at the end of the day, it should really all come down to the same question. How will we win? So we need to define what we need mean by win. And so in this, you know, in what does it mean for our dam initiatives? What does winning usually mean? So in most cases, it means creating efficiencies within the organization so they can do more, better, faster, right? Like that's a lot of what digital asset management, the value of it is to the organization. Um, so winning or not failing at your enterprise strategy would be those efficiencies are realized, that productivity gain has been realized. Um, another win for DAM is often mitigating risk. So risk of misuse of assets, um, and things like that, and getting that to be under control. Um, and then ultimately, the goal is to transform something about the customer or audience experience, and the DAM is kind of a, a tool that's going to help enable that, which really, at the end of the day, the main thing is that the DAM is going to help um, with the company generating more revenue or your organization, you know, somehow feeding into the bottom line. So it sort of ladders up to all that stuff, right? So that's what damn, that's what winning usually means for damn. Now let's figure out how to create a strategy that will result in these outcomes. So we keep the eyes on the prize. So as I said, one of the secrets uh, just now is that we can make this strategy simple. So, and that, and that's what I want you to think about is that good strategy is actually very simple. It's not super complex. And one of the my favorite resources on the topic of strategy in general is this book called Good Strategy, Bad Strategy, The Difference and Why It Matters by Richard Rommel. And what, what he says is that a lot there's a lot of strategy or things parading around, masquerading as strategy out there. Um, and, and none of those things are strategy. So that's why he, he emphasizes this difference and what's bad strategy and what's good. And one of the things he says is mistaking goals for strategy is one of the problems. Many bad strategies are just statements of desire rather than plans for overcoming obstacles. And so he defines a very simple framework for what a good strategy is. So the first it's, he called it the kernel. And this is the, the kind of uh, the core of your good strategy. The kernel is that one, you have a diagnosis of the challenge that you're responding to. Two, you have a guiding policy that describes the approach you'll take to respond to that challenge. And then three, you have a set of coherent actions designed to carry out the guiding policy. So if we take this idea and we translate it to digital assets and digital asset management, it might look something like this. You have a diagnosis of the digital asset challenge. What's the problem or the opportunity with digital assets that the organization is encountering? Two, you have a guiding policy of solving for priority digital asset use cases. And that is what I was kind of mentioning earlier with that Boston Consulting Group article where they talk about solving for use cases and and ensuring the data quality and the technical architecture to support those use cases in a sort of iterative and prioritized order. So I'm bringing that idea into this right here. So that's your guiding policy. And then lastly, you have a set of coherent actions designed to overcome the challenge for those use cases. So we'll talk about how to do this. Um, I already meant, sort of emphasized the use case thing. That was what that was for. So. If we agree that the goal behind the DAM initiative is to create efficiencies, improve productivity, reduce risk, or enable new experiences, then we have to solve for the people that are going to be doing those things. So the thing we need to understand is who are they, what are they trying to do, and what data do they need to be able to do it, data and digital assets. 
And we need to figure out a priority order of those things. The Boston Consulting Group article states that correctly sequencing the use cases is as important for success as implementing the data and architecture initiatives themselves. They note it's critical to sequence the rollout of use cases so that to the greatest extent possible, the first ones you solve for will improve the data assets that would benefit the subsequent use cases and so on and so forth. So accelerating their deployment and business impact. All right, so we have this tool, as I mentioned, the DAM Strategy Canvas. And the way this is structured should now uh, be somewhat understandable based on what I've shared. We have our three kernels of a good DAM strategy, um, which is the kind of challenge area, the use cases and data needs area, and then the key actions area. Um, so we'll dive further into this tool in just a second, but you know it's pretty simple. Um, what problem are we solving that relates to our overall business objectives? What digital asset use cases are we solving for and what data do they need? And then what actions will we take to solve that problem for those use cases? So pretty simple. It's just those three parts. All right. Secret number two is that you can create a strategy fairly quickly. Um, I have seen teams get paralyzed for months, even years, because they were very overwhelmed and they did not know where to start with these types of things. Um, we want you to get moving quickly. We, you don't have time to wait around. There's a lot of pressure to get things done and the world is changing too fast. So the better our digital asset foundations are, the more we will be able to take advantage of new technologies like AI and people think, hey, you know, your leadership might be thinking, well, why do we need to do all this digital asset management stuff? Isn't AI gonna come along and solve everything? Well, no, the AI won't be able to do much if it doesn't have good data to work with. So. The better you can you can create those foundations, the more you'll be able to leverage those new new tools. So we need to get moving. Um, and so to do this quickly, we're going to propose a five step process, and that's going to include a research or discovery phase, and then three meetings with your key decision makers. So meeting one is about defining your challenge. Meeting two is about identifying and prioritizing use cases. And meeting three is about figuring out your key actions and sequencing them. Now, you may be able to do this faster. Maybe you can do it in just one meeting, but from our experience, it takes a few sessions to get through everything. There's a lot to discuss. So maybe it's a month long process, um, which is still pretty fast in the grand scheme of things, right? Uh, time well spent, let me just say that. You will need a decision-making team to work through this process with you. So bring those stakeholders on board and hold a kickoff meeting, give them this plan and, and then get to work. So the first thing you're gonna do is your research or discovery. And this is the diagnosis part of the work. So remember the Richard Rummelt's three kernel, three, the three part kernel um, is, in the first part is the diagnosis of the challenge you're responding to. So don't skip this. Um, and it's sometimes easy to be tempted to think we already know the answer to this, but the discovery phase is a really, really crucial step. So put on your consultant's hat and pretend you don't know everything about this problem already. Talk to people who understand the problem and to understand the problem from their point of view. And I promise you, you're going to learn some new things as you go through that process. And these things are critical to the next phases of the work. So I, I, I wanna emphasize how important this is. So what you're gonna do is identify the stakeholders that will influence or be influenced by the initiative. And then identify sp more specifically the users who need to use or do use digital assets. You're gonna find representatives from each group. You don't need to talk to everyone in the company, but get a handful of representatives. You don't need to talk to them forever. Just 30 minutes should be fine. And then you're gonna sort of look for patterns in what you learned what, from those conversations. Now, when you talk to your stakeholders, you're looking at big picture things. So you wanna know what are the overall organizational priorities? Uh, what are some of the current pain points or problems? Any other related initiatives going on that will have some sort of impact on your digital asset management initiative? You need to get a sense of constraints um, resource constraints or otherwise, and then start to understand what success would look like 
um, to your leadership or other stakeholders. Now, from your users, you have a different set of questions. Um, you want to kind of get into how they use these digital assets and what they use them for and get examples. Um, so it'll bring that to life for you. You want to know how do they typically search and what information do they need in order to use assets? This is going to be very important when you're trying to prioritize your data quality improvements, for example, later on. Find out what's working well and what's not working well. Get examples again. And then how does that, those problems or the things that aren't working so well, how does that impact their work? Try to get some quantitative information out of that because you can later come back and measure that to demonstrate the ROI of your new dam initiative. Okay, so then I said you're going to have three meetings, right? And so these meetings, you're going to use your dam strategy canvas. And the first meeting, you're gonna tackle the challenge definition. You're gonna bring your findings to these meetings, the ones that you did in your discovery, and then you're gonna kind of use that as a foundation for the conversation. So the first thing you'll need to look at are sort of those high level challenges and big urgent needs, organizational priorities, et cetera. And then bring them to this conversation of your with your team about what is the problem and the impact it's having and why is this important enough and urgent enough to have to invest in? This is the whole framing of your damn strategy. So you need to be crystal clear on what the problem is that you're solving and why you need to take immediate and bold action to solve it, okay? So don't skimp on this. So the second meeting you're gonna have, you're gonna talk about your, use, your users their use cases and their data needs. And you're gonna talk, work with your decision-making team in that meeting to try to prioritize those. You're gonna distill and refine them and prioritize them. So um, you'll again have findings you're bringing from your discovery period, and then you're gonna have this conversation. In your third meeting, once you've figured out and agreed on the problem you're solving and who you're solving it for and what they need to do, you can start to identify the actions and initiatives that are going to help resolve those things. So at this stage, we're not looking at the full implementation details. This is just a set of plausible and feasible actions that you're gonna to wanna to take in the course of this initiative. So that's kind of the, the how to do it fast. So if you can knock that out in three or so meetings, you gotta be pretty organized um, to, to do it, but I think you can do it and do it well. Um, then you got to think about how we're going to make this effective. And so here I'm going to return to something I said at the beginning, which is one of the biggest threats to your dam initiative is trying to do too much and not being focused. Um, Richard Rommel in his book, again, Good Strategy, Bad Strategy, said at the core strategy is about focus. And the most complex organizations don't focus their resources. Instead, they pursue multiple goals at once not concentrating enough resources to achieve a breakthrough in any one of them. How many of you find that familiar? I actually find it very uncomfortably familiar in many aspects. So not just in DAM, but um, it's it's so true. We, it, it's, it's There's so much to do and it's hard to kind of just focus on one thing at a time. But we want to take bold action for the strategy to be effective. So that is going to mean prioritization and it's going to mean sacrifice. So just keep that in mind. Now, this is another screenshot from that Boston Consulting Group article. And I sort of love how, um, how it's um, kind of showing you how this iterative approach can work. So, but just think about this for a second. If you're working in digital asset management, often the temptation is to solve for everything. So if we decide, for example, that a key action we want to take is improve metadata quality, what we try to do is improve all of the fields for all the assets, all of them. And there might be 50 fields and hundreds of thousands of assets. So that's a very big project. Um, and it's hard to make tangible, significant progress in that very quickly. So instead, the approach should be to focus on the fields that matter most to the first priority users for their use cases. Those fields are the ones that they search on and the information they need to use the assets and then build on this over time. Another, th another thing I see all the time is that dam professionals try to ingest all the assets. So you're doing a new dam project, you've got a new system, 
um, you know, you're going to migrate all these existing assets. And so the, the people try to do all of them at once. And so we won't go live until we've ingested everything. But our priority use case might only need a subset of those assets out there. So we should instead focus on ingesting those first and then returning to the others as they're prioritized for the use case. So what you can see in this diagram here is that, okay, we've got all these data assets across this organization, but we've this company has prioritized use case one needs this data, this data, and this data. Now, according to this key, right now, those data are of low quality. So one of their actions is going to be improve the quality of just those three data points or data sets. Use case two looks like they have an overlap here. So they're also interested in this data point or data set as well as this one and so on and so forth. Now we kind of work on those and we get to the next wave. And now all of a sudden those original data sets are of higher quality and those are benefiting this use case. So we no longer have to work on improving those. We can focus on this one over here, which we haven't touched yet and so on and so forth. So by the time you get to wave X or use case X, the overall data quality and overall data capabilities have improved tremendously. And that's by tackling this in an iterative way and kind of at the expense of all else. Um, so that's, that's kind of, that's the trick here, I think. All right, so how are we gonna make this damn strategy effective? Well, one thing we gotta do is identify practical time-bound outcomes. So where do we need to be in 90 days, in one year, in three years? Um, then identify what you will sacrifice. And I love this concept that I learned about just yesterday from this firm called The Ready. Um, it was in an email, their email newsletter that came out yesterday. And I, I, for, yeah, I cannot find the actual original thing. It was just in an email, but we're going to share a link to an article that talks about the same concept from them. And they call it even overs. So what is it that you're going to do even over this other thing? And getting everybody on a shared understanding of what those even overs are. So then at that point, you'll be able to ensure everyone on the team is aligned and they know what to say no to and that those are the same things. And then we have to iterate on a shared cadence quarterly. So this has to become a living resource, the STAM strategy. It's not static. It's something that will evolve and will iterate as we solve the initial problem, um, solve for priority one, and then move to priority two. And we'll continue to reassess that over time. So it will become effective when it has this clear timeline priorities and when everyone understands and is working toward these shared goals. And we have to make sure that we're not trying to tackle everything at once. Again, not trying, it becomes overwhelming. And this is the thing this webinar is trying to fight against is the overwhelm when we're trying to do everything or we're looking at that entire ladder, you know, and every, the places we have to get to. Um, so by not tackling everything at once, taking one step at a time, um, we're gonna be much more successful. All right, I'm going to flip into demo mode here real quick. Um, this is where I'm going to actually show you the Dam Strategy Campus 2.0 edition and talk you through an example. And so let's go over here. All right, so this is a Miro board. Um, so Miro is a, is a virtual whiteboarding tool. And we're going to be sharing a link to this exact board with you in, in an email following this webinar. Um, so be on the lookout for that, but I'll, I'll just kind of show you real quick. We have a little introduction at the top about what this is. You have a blank canvas here that you can use um, and you'll be able to make a copy of this and then get to work on it yourself. And then I have this example down here at the bottom. That's what we're gonna talk about right now real quick. So first of all, I just wanna mention what the 2.0 version is, the change that you'll see from the 1.0 um, that I was showing you in the slides just a minute ago is that we've introduced this finding section here on the left. And um, we like that because it's, it brings the, the things you found in your discovery kind of right there next to what you're working on. Um, so you can kind of keep it close as you work through these, these points um, along this canvas. Now, what we're going to talk about is a hypothetical organization. Um, this is called ACME, uh, 
Acme products, let's say Acme, Acme retailer. Um, and so they have, um, you know, they don't really have an enterprise dam. They have like one dam and one department that like nobody uses and it's sort of languishing over there. And they have assets kind of all spread across the organization, uh, no governance, no really great metadata, et cetera. So uh, maybe that's a familiar situation that many of you have been in at some point in your career or are in now. Um, so let's talk about this Acme organization. And I have little stickers here to show you where to start. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at the challenge. So like I said before, we gotta first start with diagnosis of the, of the challenge. Okay, so what we found in our discovery work, and I'll zoom in a little more, is that the highest priority business objective right now is marketing personalization. So this is kind of coming from the top, coming from leadership. Marketing prioritization is something they're making a big bet on, going all in on. And so that's kind of currently under development. Um, we also know that, as I mentioned, assets are scattered across numerous siloed systems. They're very difficult to find and integrate into any new platforms, like a marketing automation platform. Um, and the other thing, challenge they're really having right now is that rights and allowed usage for assets is unknown in a lot of cases. And so there's a lot of misuse or risk of misuse. And so we've taken the findings here and um, come, crafted this challenge statement, um, which says, Acme does not have a single source of truth for digital assets, resulting in significant inefficiencies, unnecessary expenses, and a high risk of asset misuse. Assets are urgently needed for our personalization initiative. So that marketing personalization um, big program is, you know, what it's going to do is try to um, segment audiences and have assets and resources and content that will be presented to them that will be much more relevant to them, to their affinity, to their demographic, et cetera. Um, that could be email messaging. That could be web content. It could be social media content. Um, so it's trying to target uh, much more specifically what content, what messages people are going to see. Um, and so you need digital assets for that. There's going to be a lot of visuals. It's going to be a lot of video. Um, so they're going to need those things. And that's going to need to be automated to make this thing work. So it's a big challenge and it's a big opportunity um, for this company. Um, so let's imagine we're kind of working through this iteratively. And we've started, we've, we've come up with this challenge statement. And we've started to draft what are the success criteria for this. We know we need a new dam solution, an, an enterprise solution in this case. And we need to integrate with key marketing and data platforms um, to, to, to enable um, the marketing personalization goal. So some of this, we've just drafted a few success measures that we're hoping to achieve with this. Um, so it's always good to just kind of get started with that, with what the success looks like, and then iterate over time to, to refine this. But they've already identified they want to reduce time spent for searching for assets by 85%, reduce time spent clearing assets by 75%, and increase speed to launching personalized personalization campaigns by 50%, as well as increasing brand consistency. So I don't know if you remember, but a few minutes ago, I said, ask for quantitative information when you're doing the discovery work with users, because you want to know how long does it take you to find assets today? How much time do you spend clearing assets today? Because if you have those numbers and you can extrapolate about from that, you can start to see what reduction of that will look like. Um, so that's, that's kind of a, a key thing to keep in mind as you're gathering information. Okay, so we have our success, or I'm sorry, our challenge well-defined and our team is in agreement. Our next question is, what use cases are we trying to serve and what data do they need? So that's this is step two, as I said, and we have our use cases sort of mapped out in priority order, one, two, three, four, five. And what we've done so far, and this is purely hypothetical, this is not a real client that I work with, but um, so, but just imagine, pretend. Okay, so the marketing teams need quick access to assets when developing campaigns. That makes sense, personalization campaigns or otherwise. Um, because this personalization thing is a big priority, marketing teams are priority number one for our use cases. So that was something we were able to determine with our decision team. 
And what data do they need? So they like to search by or need to search by product name, uh, campaign type. So is it a 4th of July sale? Is it a, you know, something else, some, some kind of campaign. So, right. So what is it? What's the type of campaign? And then what's the asset type? Is it a social media asset? Is it an email asset? Is it a banner, you know, web banner, et cetera. So what kind of asset? These are the types of things they're going to be searching on when they're trying to find something to put into their, their personalization um, campaigns. And what they really need to know is, can I use this asset? That's the main question that they have. Um, and then they're going to need the most recent version of these assets and only the ones approved for use. They don't, they don't, they shouldn't have access to the other kinds of assets there. So that's not everything in the world that they need, but those are the priority things that we identified um, about how they search and what information they need. So if we can solve for those, we're going to get a long way for this use case. Second use case, priority two. In this case, it's creative and video production teams that need access to high quality original video and images when developing new assets for marketing campaigns. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I skipped my findings for my for my first use case. Really sorry. So have some findings for use case one, which is that um, users want one consolidated database. They, they do not like having to go to multiple systems to find what they need. Um, and they have a really hard time knowing what's approved for use. Um, this, this is very frustrating to them. Um, and they have a kind of folder structure in Dropbox that they use. And it's very, very confusing, especially newer people. They don't know how to find what they need. And they end up relying on a lot of institutional knowledge um, to get these things done. Not efficient, not, not, not something you can automate, right? So that's, that's not working out very well. Um, so that's why this is some of the most important things they need. Apologies for skipping that. Now let's come to our use case too. So these creative and production teams. So what these folks are doing is they're actually creating the new assets that are going to be used in these marketing campaigns. Um, and so right now, at least all the video is stored on hard drives with the final edits on Dropbox. Um, they don't have metadata for their video other than file and folder names. Um, and they have not done a good job of keeping track of rights information. So this is a challenge they face. Tracking down rights is very, very difficult. So it's often easier just to do a new shoot or license stock uh, footage or images. And this is frustrating to the leadership who have invested in these new productions, these shoots that have cost a lot of money, and now they're not re leveraging those assets. So we don't like that. Um, so what do they, what do they need? For their search and browse, they need to be able to find things again by product name. So you see here we have kind of an, an overlap on those two. Um, they need to look by date range. So they might be looking from the last year or two, for example. And they partner with different agencies, freelancers, et cetera. So they need to know who was the creator of, these, of the material. Um, they also really want to know the rights and license term. They're not as concerned with the kind of only show me things I'm allowed to see, to use because they might be able to go through a rights clearance process for the new production, but they need to understand how to get that information easily. And they're looking for raw, original, unedited materials. So they need to you know be able to use that modular content to create new assets and new resources. So if we work on these two use cases and just focus our data remediation efforts on these few types of fields, this type of information, we're gonna go a long way toward serving the next group that we're working through. And then we'll work on these kind of cleanup efforts and remediation and improvement projects and that'll go a long way toward serving the next use case and so on and so on and so forth. So we're not saying all the assets, all the metadata, do it all at once. We're gonna take that iterative approach according to the use case. So by the time we get to use case three, and we haven't started on use case three because it's not as much of a priority, that's the e-commerce team who needs the access to current product images and video in order to create shopping experiences on our on our store online, um, we've decided to slot them later because the personalization effort is priority number one for our company. Um, and this team is doing okay with their manual process. We know we can bring a lot of value to them, 
but it's going to have to come after. We're going to sequence, like I said, one foot in front of the other. So that's kind of our second step. Now, the third last step is over here, which is what are we going to do to enable those use cases? And so you can see what I've done here is align the colors of these sticky notes to the either overall challenge or to the use case. And that's just to kind of make it give you a little visual sense of the sequencing and how it relates to different pieces. So the, this section of the canvas is divided up into uh, several categories. And these are just the common ones that we often see people needing to work on. New technology or new functionality, new integrations, et cetera, all would come under this. Um, new people or partnerships, um, adding uh, additional skill sets to the, to the team is sometimes needing to, to increase the capabilities. Um, governance is often an area of improvement. Um, so we need to set standards, uh, have clear decision-making, have good policies. Data quality is another one of those because usually in almost all these cases, we need to do some improvement to the data itself. Um, that's maybe creating new data, new metadata, that might be cleanup of data um, and migration of data, et cetera. We have a process section, which covers a lot of the things you're gonna need to um, to get these, these projects done, to improve the data quality, um, to onboard team members, et cetera. And then you have a continuous improvement section where you can track how are we gonna do a better job of uh, and, and continuously do a good job of, of keeping on track, staying on a roadmap, ensuring we have our change management in place, et cetera. So what I've got here is, you know, for this organization, there some of these things are just foundational and so those I've put in yellow, kind of matching this, this, um, this sort of foundational challenge. So we know that selecting and implementing a new enterprise dam solution is just a foundation to serve all use cases. So we're gonna have that one here. But then more specifically for use case one, our priority right now is going to be integrate the dam with the marketing automation platform. There are other platforms this use case will need, for example, integration with the CMS, uh, maybe the CRM. So, but that's not number one. We, we're going to come to that later. So we need to just start with, with this. And then another thing we're going to do on the functionality side is make sure we have a permission structure that only allows marketers as a group or role access to approved access. So we can limit that experience for them. And so this is kind of a combination of functionality and user experience. So they, they don't even see the stuff they're not supposed to and have that confusion and risk misuse and have brand inconsistency, all the things. So we just don't let them see it. Um, and then we have for our use case two, um, for our creatives and production teams, we're gonna integrate with their creative tools. Maybe this is something comes out of the box in one of our new, in our new dam system, and which would be nice. But if we have to do some integrations, um, that's gonna be a use case two priority. Um, so we'll be able to sequence these things. And over here in this part of the canvas, you can start to think about phasing, sequencing, et cetera. I know it's not the main point of the strategy, but you do want to have a roadmap at the end of this, as I said, to make it effective. So you can already start thinking about timing, uh, sequencing, and some milestones to work on um, what you're going to need to do. And so we kind of have the similar ideas down here. We need some foundational stuff around having a damn product owner. We need a, a librarian. We're gonna get a consultancy like AVP to help with the system selection and, and initial implementation. Uh, we're gonna get a governance team because we need to make sure that we don't have any you know, data quality problems again, moving forward. Um, so, and the governance team is gonna start with creating that taxonomy for product name, asset type and campaign name. We're not gonna to try to boil the ocean and do all the taxonomy work. We're just gonna get that initial stuff started and create some categorization framework or criteria for rights and usage. And so, so on, you can kind of see the pattern here, like the first, the first use case gets the, you know, we're gonna work on things that will benefit them and then we'll layer on the next use case and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's the damn strategy canvas. That's how it works. Um, you know, one, two, three, put your findings here. In real life, this is much messier. I'm giving you a nice clean example, <laughs> but um, yeah, you can whittle it down. So maybe at the end, it does look this nice and clean. Um, so 
Let me flip back over to my slides. So what you have at the end there is you have your ideas and you've made those decisions with your team and you've got a really great um, plan in place. You've got that foundation of your strategy to move forward for your project. And we shared three kind of secrets or ways you can go about this. And one is that to make it simple, two is you can do this quickly and you've got to make it effective by making, you know, figuring out those priorities, what you'll sacrifice and how you're going to put this in order um, in, in, a, in a roadmap. Now, I didn't say one of the secrets was that it's easy. Um, so actually, that's the tricky part. <laughs> simple is not always the easiest. And I like this quote from Steve Jobs, that simple can be harder than complex. Um, you have to work hard to get your thinking clean to make it simple. But it's worth it in the end, because once you get there, you can move mountains. And I think... Uh, you know, if you've ever learned about, you know, writing and, and the, the lessons are always simpler, simpler, sent, get rid of the fluff and things like that. So there's the, the simpler um, is always better, but it, it can be hard. With that, I will stop talking and uh, see if you have any questions. Thank you so much for joining today. It's been great to have you here with me. Um, I hope this will be useful to you as you move into your uh, damn strategy projects and be able to take some of these ideas, tools, and frameworks and put them to use.